Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Lucy Gray, and welcome to my uh, online uh, webinar for my Technology and Education 575 students. Uh, tonight, we're, um, we're happy to welcome Sarah Barron Thomas, who is the lead learner for the Montgomery Academy, Montgomery Academy Middle School in Montgomery, Alabama. Now, that sounds like you're, you're so you're the, you're the middle school director? You're like the principal now, right, Sarah? Yep. Oh my principal now. It's crazy. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. And she um and she's passionate about helping others grow in their practice with an emphasis on learning. And she's committed to thinking education and she loves um she loves wild and crazy middle schoolers and dogs as well. And I know Sarah from um, the Sidwell Friends School, where I did a workshop for a couple summers. But I think you I think we were connected on Twitter before that. I think that was a great connector. Mm -hmm. And Sarah Tyler, school. part of my story. Tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's, and now we're, we're Facebook friends and we follow each other's work and see, and you've been on quite a few journeys, it seems, the past few years. And um, I'm so happy to see you happy and um, rising the ranks of middle of, of uh, the independent school world. Leadership. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, we do have one independent school person in the class, and she's her name's Erica, and she I don't think she's with us tonight yet, but she's at uh, the Catherine Cook School here in um, in Chicago. And do you? Yeah, know my best my best friend teaches at Catherine Cook. Oh, yes, sweet. my very best friend in the whole wide world teaches math at Catherine Cook. That's oh, fantastic. Yeah. I'm so excited. Oh, good. So Erica will <laughs> Erica will watch us afterwards. She, she usually is here, so um, she must have something else going on. So she'll love, she'll, she will watch this at some point if she doesn't drop in tonight. But she's a brand new baby teacher, and she's, I think she's, she's, she's like a, I think she's working in their innovation space. I think that's what her role is. She was a teacher assistant last year, and now she's working in their, um, there's a name for their innovation hub. I can't remember what it is, but um, her name is Erica and she's awesome. So she'll, she'll love to know that you're, that you have connections to Catherine Cook. That's great. Um, anyway, well, I love, I love all so you've been up here lately, haven't you? Like, weren't you here a couple a lot. of times? Yes. Well, I, I was there twice in December, uh, uh, four of my best friends from college and then my, uh, one of my other dear friends live in Chicago. And so I tend to come up, uh, once or twice a year. So it's, Oh, love it. Love it. Love it. You need to come to ISTE this year because it's going to be in Chicago. Ooh. I've never been to ISTE. I oh my gosh. Just... It's an experience. Love. Yeah. Do it. You should. It's in, it's in the end of June and um, yeah, it's kind of overwhelming, but if you're going to come, if you're going to go to it in a city like this, come here because it won't happen here for another 20 years. It's so expensive to have conferences here. <laughs> Next year it's in Philly and the year after that it's in Anaheim from what I understand. So um, it, right. typically is in, it typically is either in Philly, Atlanta, uh, or San Antonio. Those are the three big ones. And, and so Chicago is a little different. But anyway, it would be fun to see you here again in Chicago. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to let Sarah take over and just talk to us and we can interact with you as much as you want or as little as you want. It's totally up to you, but we're so glad to have you here, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming. Be here. And um, again, please forgive the dogs in the background. They, they want everyone to know that the neighborhood is safe. Um, and I was so excited when I saw that you were um, asking people to come and talk to your students because this is just some, something I really love to get to do to talk to other educators about about building a professional learning network and I imagine given where many of you pro what it sounds like many of you are in your space um, and time of career that you pro some of the things I might be saying are not new to you so you can always stop me and say give me the advanced track like that is not a problem whatsoever um but i know that about 10 years ago that starting my professional learning network um started really just changed my whole trajectory as as a professional and so i particular slides but i'm going to show you a couple of things i use and then some productivity 
Yes. I think the story that Lucy shared ago is is a perfect story of how you've um I primarily got into this world of a professional learning network via Twitter and I started um and I was in an ed leadership program at Hopkins about um I graduated 10 years ago. And so I started in that space just kind of as a, hey, I want to meet people. I don't know what this thing is that I can't write a lot in and I'm super verbose. But what I'm going to do is that I started school. At the time, I was an elementary and middle school music teacher and just really wanted to learn my personality about education and about what people were doing and so I started in that space of of connecting people with people there and you know the last decade or so meeting people in the real world <laughs> that I Twitter space and I think that that is incredibly has been incredibly powerful for me so when I met when first time it said well and um, one of my very best friends in the whole wide world, um, when we first met, we first met, we'd never met in person. And the first time we met, we presented together at a conference. And we, but we'd known each other on Twitter for a long time. Um, and so that's just a really, an, a really, really neat way of connecting. And now, you know, I moved through the trajectory of music teacher, then became a technology coordinator and was really active in helping teachers grow their practice and and all of the pieces of the puzzle that i learned to get to that space were because of um my professional professional learning network i never took coursework in um education and uh or um, technology education i took one class in grad school but other than that I did everything via learning other people. And I think that's the most powerful thing an educator can do is be thirsty for learning and go out and find learning. So, I mean, primarily, um, can, can I like have show of hands of people that are already active on Twitter um, and using or using some other kind of connection tool? I'm on Twitter. Awesome. I'm on Twitter. Sweet. I think everybody has been forced to be on Twitter at some point during this program. <laughs> awesome. I think that's fantastic. And so I'm going to, um, I'm just going to share the things to be productive. Um, and so here we are. Here's so just regular old Twitter feed, um, getting all the things all day long. Um, but for me, um, what really turned the page on being able to use Twitter effectively was moving into an aggregator. And so I tend to use Hootsuite as my aggregator. Um, it's just, I've tried a bunch of them and it's my, my particular favorite. And then I can use this to follow the, the threads and the streams that I want to be following on a regular basis as, a, as opposed to following the um, 1,044 people that I follow on a regular basis, which are like super baby numbers in the Twitter world, but they're perfectly comfortable for me. Um, but I tend to follow um, a particular set of streams that are relevant to the work I'm doing now. So I follow EdChat just because that's a pretty common hashtag for people who want to be talking about the education world. Um, I follow Ed Camp, and I know you talked about Ed Camps last time. I'm an Ed Camp junkie um, and a regular participant in that universe. I'm a big fan of, of um, participant-driven professional development, so that is something that I spend a lot of time with. And then I also follow... Um, I opened a chat window and I can see the Alabama Ed Chat because that's not something that I'm used to. Um, I follow that group because um, I'm new to Alabama. And so coming to the state and learning about what's going on in the state was um, really important for me. And then I follow a couple of other, you know, hashtags that are relevant to the work that I, that I do. 
digital parenting is um, a hashtag that I that I follow, um, and that's that as now as that I wear the hat of principal. Um, that's a piece that I do. I skipped ahead to to YouTube there. Um, that's a piece that I I use a lot, um, and. So from that aggregator, from Hootsuite, where does that come from? And this, this was the, um, just in the chat, the intimation that, you know, there is, a, there is some kind of chat for every, um, every state. And then in this website here, this Google site that you may have seen before, and if you haven't, it's, don't let it overwhelm you, gives the day-by-day -day hashtags for Twitter chats. Um, and usually, between an hour and 90 minutes long for various different um, subject areas and topics and, ver and various things. I popped into one the other day I to the hack learning um, one, I think that was on Sunday morning, and I was like, oh, I've never even seen this before, but I'll take a look at it. And um, you can follow these chats and, and really dig into, um, what are people talking about? So like if I go to English chat, that's the English teachers, you know, Twitter chat that they are going, that, that English teachers from all over the place are talking about, hey, Erica, Jeff Edmonds is my best friend. Um, and the using. What I found with Twitter chats when I, you know, I first started to engage with it, I was so overwhelmed by the speed of things and by the way that I um, couldn't keep up. So one of the is, um, or what I, that I started to do was I started to use a different aggregator when I wanted to participate in, um, in, a, in a chat. So for example, if I knew a chat was happening, I would go to this website here that my friend Shannon showed me about called Twubs. And then I can just do, let's see, there's one in, in chat is going on right now. Um, I can just do that particular chat. Um, and I'm gonna bring this screen back up here so it's bigger. I can just focus on that. And the nice thing about it is that I can slow it down and speed it up. And the thing that I like about that is sometimes when you're in a chat and people are sharing questions and they're sharing ideas and they're doing all things, it's like too overwhelming. Um, and so by being able to use something like TWABS, I can slow things down um, and really get the chance to see what is it that I'm, what is it that's going on? And I will often, while I'm in a chat, run through things and see um, links and I'll just open up tab after tab after tab after tab. And I know that I can always come back to that piece when I'm engaging in using um, Twitter as my, as my, as my chat source or as my learning source when I'm, when I'm thinking about that, cause it can get very overwhelming. The one piece that I, um, really feel like I started using, or I started seeing a lot is that I was feeling like I was feeling compelled to go through and look at everything all. Um, one of the pieces that one of the wisdoms I heard from someone at a dead camp once is it's still going to be there. So if you could spend all day following and learning things on Twitter or reading every blog out there, um, but the one piece that I have to just keep coming back to is it will still be, like it will be something else. I may miss chat A, but chat X will be there two hours later when I have time to, to come back to it. So there'll be some days where I'll be really into following the threads and following the things that are going on. Um, I like the 5.30 breakfast club chat because I get up super early in the morning. And so I like to see kind of what everybody's on and sometimes I'll engage with that. But if I don't do it for a week, it's okay because there's still going to be information out there. Um, I built the professional learning network by starting out slow and starting out following 
people that are really heavily engaged in the um, ed tech world and the education world at large and people like Lucy and people like other folks that are out there that they are really active in in the the learning world and so them then let me see what was going on in their worlds and then from there starting to build my own I was a I was a talker a Twitter stalker for a good year before I started to engage and then I started retweeting and then I started um, posting um, my own content and those kinds of things and once once you get into the right flow of you know what what flow of time management works for you for that professional learning you know who people are so there's that wonderful thing of like putting something out into the Twitter world saying I need this like for example I technology and I was blogging with third graders I said I'm looking for a class to blog with and so I um, you know shared that I put it out there in the Twitter got people back so that's a wide audience but then there's the smaller audience of once you build those your go-to people for whatever it is that you possibly want to learn you have that group of people that you can go to because the piece that's nice is these as as you make the connections you then through conferences or various other elements start to make personal connections too. you actually can meet these real people um, and that's that's an incredible an incredible space to be in the other thing I do for my own personal learning network is I'm an active ever user I just saw um, um, you know there's there's lots of different ways to to keep up with the reading you could read and things every day and then again spend all your time just reading articles and so I tend to look at a handful of things on on Twitter but I also tend to look at three or four I'm not sharing this with you so you cannot see what I'm looking at sorry um, different sites and then I'm able to um, save that information for others so for example um, I go into a various different places in my learning for my learning I tend to focus on I do mind shift sorry this is the thing I go to mind shift for on KQED I think it is incredible for information um, really great articles of, of, range of ideas um, I get I look at the usable knowledge um, website a lot and get their newsletter from Harvard Graduate School really great research really good practic practical elements um, and then things I pull from New York Times various other learning sites and then what I do is I use my Chrome app um, for Evernote and put them all in Evernote because there's never gonna be enough time for me to read them all in one setting. So what I tend to do is put them, um, put them in Evernote under, for example, here, screen share, so, or screen share, um, professional reads. So the professional reads that I have for um, 2017, 2018 are all things that I have pulled off various different sites. I save them here and I know go back to them and so that's a huge piece of my of my personal learning network is using Evernote to save all of all of the um, the elements and um, I have not used the if this then that with ever I think that's in that's a great way of of managing your your pieces with that Evernote is an app so Evernote is kind of my I was an Evernote evangelist before they got fancy and cool, um, <laughs> I think, um, and I say that with love and affection. So I, um, they are web, the web-based version of Evernote just because it's easier on the screen share, but it, it's a desktop app, it's a phone app, and the nice thing about it is it syncs everything. Um, and so for my professional learning, um, I will put, I will put articles there. I'll share all kinds of things to it and share, and then you can share them directly from Evernote to other people um, or what have you. Um, 
And I actually, just as a side note, not, not related necessarily to prefer professional learning, but to productivity, because I'm a big fan of productivity when you become a principal or you have even less time you had a lot of ways. And I, um, in terms of productivity, I take hand notes still in all my meetings. I much prefer that. But then I snap them into Evernote. So I can, you can, Evernote has a built-in camera that has handwriting recognition. And so I can save that all in one place. And I swear they're not paying me to be an evangelist for them. I just, it's one of my favorite productivity tools. And I've been using it now. Again, it's tools. Tools come and go. And this one I've been using um, successfully for a, a decade. And uh, sharing notebooks. Absolutely. So we've done collaborative notebooks um, for all kinds of, of groups that I've been in. And um, it's just it's just been really helpful in that kind of way. Um, I think the piece about personal learning networks or professional learning networks, I can go back and forth what the title should be. It's the same thing. That's really important is that once you've started to establish who your people are um, is that you find ways to to encourage and connect beyond just sharing back and forth. And I think that's that's been a piece when I meet some of these people in real life um, that's that's been really huge because I think um, the as as we continue to look outward beyond our build our class classrooms, beyond our school buildings, beyond our districts, whatever ever have you, there's there's just no reason to not be able to find and learn and grow in, from new information. And I think that's the blessing of of building these networks is that that you have this 24-7 access to incredible brilliant people. And and that's a piece that um, is so important very first year teaching, um, Twitter didn't exist, which just seems sad and um, amazing all at the same time. But things, I mean, the, um, it barely existed. Uh, the internet barely existed at that point. And I was in a, middle, a tiny little town in Southwest Iowa for my first teaching job. And I just think, oh, how might it have been if I had had other music teachers at the time to connect to? Because I was the only one in the whole school. And also the only one within 30 miles. So there's um, some benefits to that particular for those of us whose subjects, subject areas are a little more um, singular within a school building. Or, you know, for, um, for if you are taking time away, stay connected to the forefront of teaching and learning via these networks. I think that's really important as well. I'm going to take a breath for a minute because I think I've been talking way too long um, and just and just check in and see if I'm sh if everyone's feeling like I'm sharing anything new or feeling like everything you're hearing is old hat. I bet the Evernote is I bet Evernote is new to people. That's my guess. Um, and um, and I it, the thing about Evernote is that it's like the jack of all trades. It's a little bit different on yeah. different platforms. Um, and like just the fact that you can take a picture and then have it go into a folder or you know, while you're shopping mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, the audio notes piece is also really interesting to me. I mean, I don't use it as fully as I should. They used, do they still have school subscriptions? Do you know? Cause they, I know that they pushed that for a while and then I, ha I haven't heard anything about it. I don't know most of my kids, uh, most of my students aren't old enough. Yeah. Um, and let, I mean, I don't, well, it might be COPA compliant, but it, well, we're a, we're a G suite school. So, um, so we, have it. um, it seems like they were pushing it like, like back in 2011, 2010, I'm looking, I'm doing a Google search and I say that I see like nothing about it. So, and there are, there are other apps too, particularly that have come out. Um, they're kind of notebook oriented that you can draw in stuff. If you're at iPad school, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but, um, but 
I think this is, I, I see Evernote as like personal productivity. Exactly. Me too. Absolutely. And our students, um, we're a one to one iPad five through 12 and the G suite last year. Yeah. They, and they still use notability a lot. Oh, I um, love notability. I'm a, I'm good. I'm, like I sold my soul to Google a long time ago. So, um, I, I, you know, I can, I, the, but for the writing thing, yeah. um, that's a huge piece. I, the one piece that I think that Evernote, um, has not done is, um, which is why I tend to write on paper and then snap it in. Yeah. I, I, the, I don't write on paper anymore at all. I don't do a lot of handwriting in general and so um so that's not it's it's I, here's the thing i think that what we need to teach kids is that it's everybody has their own style of managing their workflow right and these are the different yeah. tools and you figure out what works for you and what doesn't and i think that same also applies to adults like i think this is it's overwhelming to adults the choices they have out there but it, it, i think it's helpful this is like why i don't know if you've ever been to one of these things we talked about it last week a play date which is similar to an ed camp in the, in the sense that it's informal and people just get together and play. And I don't know how pervasive they are now, but a few years ago they were going. And I think just giving time, just like you would with third graders and math manipulatives before a lesson, you'd give them time to play with and explore the manipulatives so that they're not distracted by them when you actually do something with them. It's the same thing with adults. Like why not give them some time? So let's just play with Evernote and see what it does and report back. I, I think teachers mm -hmm. don't get enough of that in the, PD, in the PD that they're getting. So that might be something that you guys might wanna think about when you're designing your PD experiences is how can I get people to play? And I think people are, a pre, I, I think play brings a sense of joy to your work too, that sometimes is lacking. Yeah. Um, um, the other thing I wanted to mention too for the people who are like super nerdy, we mentioned IFTTT, if then do this, or if then blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is the craziest thing. These are scripts that will let you, like I think every time I tweet, it puts a, twi it puts a copy of my tweet in a Evernote. Something crazy like that. I've, there are these different recipes that you can, you know, yeah. attach to your different accounts to do really crazy things and improve your yep. productivity and then you can make your own too if you're super nerdy um but you guys might find this interesting if you're if you're trying to like record something like i don't know um all your bookmarks into a, a spreadsheet or something like that you may find it helpful yeah yeah i one of the things that i don't i don't have a lot of recipes but one of the ones i did before i got google photos is I had um, a recipe that as soon as I took a photo, it dropped it into Dropbox. And yeah. it's just one of having devices, you know, devices just have a heart attack. And so you like, there it is, there it's in the cloud. Um, go. I think those are kind of really neat, neat ways yeah. of working. In terms of play and thinking about designing professional development, so I don't believe in fact meetings that aren't development related like if we're not actually learning something then I we shouldn't be beating mm -hmm. and um, when we when we, uh, when we first introduced Google like this this it was actually no in year two this summer, we differentiated some of the workshops that we did and we still gave people the chance to kind of go, go like Google, I still do what you mean when you say drive. And so we would have that piece. And then I got into more of the, um, into play with some of the higher end of the G Suite. And what we did was, I didn't like have a slide and a presentation and all the piece. I said, with this, we're going to mess with these. You can't break it. You cannot break Google. I guarantee you're not smart enough to break well, you are smart enough. You're beautiful. I promise you're not going to break it. And so we, um, that's the way that I think if we just give a little bit of time and that's how I didn't take a ton of class to become a tech coordinator. I just played with stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think that is the key because we want our kids 
kids to be like that. We want our kids to be thinking flexi flexibly, thinking with problem solving brains. And I think that that's a huge piece that we is that, or as the principal is, I don't know how, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, and I think that that critical piece that if I don't know, I use this network of people and ideas to figure it out. And that um, modeling as a school leader is really, really important because um, I think you set the tone for your faculty that they have permission to do that. And I cannot tell you how often I've had like a variety of school leaders where I've worked. My first principal, he, there's no way he would have ever done anything like this. And I was a brand new baby teacher and scared of him. Um, my second principal was more playful and more willing to give us autonomy. And then my third principal, which was lab, he was, he was awesome. I mean, he, that, that was the whole, the whole focus of, I think independent schools do this really well. And I, I think this is something that public schools could do if they opted to and were brave. But a lot of public schools, particularly ones that are uh, beleaguered for whatever reason, um, they lock everything, they lock their whole, their, their mentalities down almost. Um, but this is something that doesn't cost money, is to empower people to take charge of what they're doing and to be excited about something. And it's a small way, to, it's a small way that you can make people feel good about what they're doing, I think. Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, I think one of the things I've seen, so this is my third school year and I'm just so proud um, of, of the way that, that the teachers that I work with have, have taken risks. And I think that's what Mia just said. It's that permission. It's that, it's that being able to say, what's the worst thing that could happen? You know, you know you, they could mess up. They could, the kid, the, the lesson could just fall flat. And then what have you shown to students that ad adults are human and we make mistakes too. And, um, you know, we do, we do genius hour in the seventh grade at the end of the year. Um, they, the wild right now they're reading wild and then develop what is their call? What is their passion? And in the, the fourth quarter, they do the whole genius hour. Um, and it is amazing some of the things that have come out of it. I still can see the pay, the the child that used to salinate water. And I think that's an incredibly powerful um, thing for them to see. And um, you know, you know, I think it's just give permission to say go go try, um, and and see what happens. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so I, I also had a question. So the, the man, so you use Hootsuite to manage it. Now, are there certain times of the day, because you're probably running around like a maniac all the time. Do you do it like first thing in the morning or during your lunch break or like, or when you're waiting to go to the doctor, how do you, how do you, how do you manage that? I check in with my tweets, my Twitter people, um, first thing in the, in the morning, um, on the mornings, um, if sometimes if standing in line somewhere, I'll just pop on to Twitter and see what's going on. And sometimes I'll just sometimes I'll some look at a specific um, a specific hashtag. I don't tend to do the chats as much as I used to, <coughs> but I just like for on Instagram this morning I saw there's a a chat I've never been a part of called principles in action. And I'm like, Oh, that's, Oh, I, and so I just put it on my calendar. That's the other piece is like, if there's a specific chat or group that I want to be a part of and they have a time on So it prompts me to say, hello, jump on, log in. Um, and that's been really helpful as well. Um, I think the other piece to it is I like, I like the slow chats that happen from time to time where, where a, a big down into the universe and we have like a day to talk through it as opposed to the rapid fire move a lot of chats. Um, <clears throat> another productivity or another tool for sharing that I haven't, um, and engaging 
conversation that I haven't actually used um, in the way I'd like to, but I want to be a part of is using Goodreads for chat, book chat. With the teachers at your school to share amazing things and having in classroom school. Um, I don't. I use, um, I, in terms of sharing with teachers, so we're really close and I'm physically present close to them every day um but i share i share with in our we share what's happening in our classrooms and our school predominantly through facebook and instagram um are we found that for our population twitter is less popular i will take um what i'm seeing that's great good reads things that i think are applicable to either the the curriculum or things that are to um, um, one of like our character trait of the month or whatever, and kind of my weekly, what my weekly. Oh so, yeah, the teacher sharing by email is. I mean, hey, it's sharing, and I think that's really, really important that um, that they're in that space. Um, in terms of you know the that the way that we we share. Um, to celebrate primarily through Facebook and Instagram at this point. Yeah. So who are some um, of, who are some of your favorite people to follow too? Out of curiosity, who do you really like? Who inspires um, you? So I really like the things that are coming of. Um, let's see if I can like pull it up. Some of the um. Some of the people that, I don't know, kind of the blending of, of um, learning and innovation and creativity. The big thing I follow most is um, the leadership, leadership Summit, which is actually, a, it's more of a Willow Creek um, church organization, but they put on a leadership conference that even if you're non-religious, I think it's fascinating. I, I, I find that the, the things that they are sharing and the speakers that they have are absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm currently following um, I'm currently following Alice Miller. I think she does a lot of work with Google. A lot of active, creative um, things, and I'd not heard of her before. I sent my um, my kit, my some of my teachers to see Joe Bowler, and um, Joe Bowler, who is like math goddess, a hero. Um, as someone who was terrified of math and and grew up just really struggling in math, um, that was. Uh, Joe opened and changed my whole world. Um, so I sent some of my teachers to her, and via her, I found this woman named Alice Keeler, who I find to be really fascinating. I agree with Cult Goji. Um, that's actually what I sent to my teachers a um, couple weeks ago in the in the weekly message was, if, if I were to make you, because that's not my jam, but if I'm going to make you follow one, per, one thing, it would be that. Because it's so chock full of useful um, and practical thinking, um, which I just, I really enjoy that. Um, I follow Cake because we do a lot with character development and those on, which is an offshoot of Kid President. Um, it's kind of connected. Um, they do a lot of really great things that can show my, our students in our communities or they can, the teachers can show an advisory to, to tap right into some of our topics of compassion and kindness and um, things that we are really trying to emphasize our middle schoolers. Um, sorry, doggy fight clubs going on right over there. Hope that's not too <laughs> distracting. I love it. Um, it brings it <coughs> real. And I've seen your dogs on yeah. Facebook. Now I've heard them. <laughs> Oh my gosh. They're really sweet, but it's, it's the witching hour. It's the witching hour. So, 
Oh my um, gosh. I'm, um, wondering, I'm wondering from the rest of the group, are there people out there that you recommend? Let's, let's do a little sharing here. You guys don't have to be so quiet. Who do you guys follow? Who inspires you? I follow at Hecky Awesome. Ms. Carrie um, Bachum, I think is how it said. Um, I've gotten to meet her at a couple ed camps. She's fantastic and energetic, and I love her um, profile pic. She does a lot with Genius Hour, right? She's like a fifth grade teacher. Yeah, she. Heights. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she, she, she does a lot with um, a Genius Hour and like um, has helped me understand it. it to, um, even though I haven't been able to fully implement she she might be part mia sorry if i'm interrupting the my internet is really i'm gonna turn off my video because i think that's part of the problem um there's this group i don't know if you guys have seen this book teach like a pirate <laughs> and um dave burgess is the author of it and he has this whole tribe of people uh, he's he gets dressed up like a pirate he came to ice a couple years ago and he does this very theatrical presentation about how we can teach differently and better. And he's very, very enthusiastic and he goes all over the country doing this. And as a result, he has a lot of followers. So you'll see the T-Lap in, look, there's a hashtag T-Lap. And you'll wonder like, what the heck is that? But it's Teach Like a Pirate. And um, I wanna say that Carrie woman is part of that group. They're all super enthusiastic. There's also another guy that's in around that um maybe in carrie's district maybe not and he's a fifth grade teacher and i've always liked his work a lot and he wrote a book i think it's he wrote learn like a pirate and his name is paul solars and he was ice educator of the year a couple years ago i really like his stuff i haven't followed him like super closely lately but he seems to do some really interesting things and it, anyways it's, it's just amazing to me I'm not, you know, um, I'm not going to go around talking like a pirate and going over the top like this, but it's, it's, I appreciate how this group of people have, have, have gelled and, um, are kind of cheerleaders for each other. There's another guy and they also are publishing under, under Dave's, um, um, label, I guess that's my impression. And, uh, the other one that's from Milwaukee and he's an independent school person is Michael Matera. And he's done all this gamification stuff in his classroom too. And he has a new YouTube channel. So um, these teachers are definitely kind of on the teacherpreneur front. Um, so Tori, do you know any of, are you familiar with these guys? I don't, don't know much. I went to an ed camp that Michael Matera was at he did a session. Um, it was all about gamification. So I think his focus on gamification more than um, some of the others. Um, who else? Not you, much more than that. Okay. Who else do you like, Tori? Out of curiosity, is there anybody that you follow on Twitter that you recommend to the group? Um, I mean, I follow Keeler. Um, name I past me right now but um last name's bell i follow her as well and they're both google yeah Casey gurus. Yep, yep yep yeah yeah she's great she's um, great. a lot of useful materials there's another guy too along those lines that puts out pretty creative stuff um he was at fetc so i didn't tell you guys about my fetc experience <laughs> uh this guy's eric kurtz i didn't go i didn't go to any sessions but um so here's so if you guys are looking for other conferences to go to um fetc stands for the future of educational technology it used to be florida educational technology conference and it's changed um and i went a couple years ago i've gone two times this is the third time i've been i didn't go last year and um i had three sessions and it's such a gigantic uh conference place i must have walked i got like twelve thousand steps every day and i i felt like i was walking and walking and walking and twelve thousand isn't that much i guess in the grand scheme of things but um crazy huge 
convention area, there's probably three convention centers. There was a, the PGA tournament conference was going on and the surfer convention was going on and then the ed tech one. And I kept on saying to people, I don't know if you know Karen Blumberg, Sarah, she's at the um, Burley school in New York. She's a good friend of mine. So she's, she's kind of crazy and fun. And, and so we'd walk by and we'd say surfer, we'd guess if people are a surfer golfer or ed tech person <laughs> as they passed us by. But um, they had uh, Sir Ken Robinson was the keynote who I've heard before and I've loved to hear, I love to hear him speak. I love his Ted talks that he's done. If you haven't seen them, they're must views. And, but they have it in the end of the exhibition hall. They don't have a dedicated uh, keynote space. And so it, just the sound didn't really lend itself to, to appreciating his message, I felt. Um, but I've never walked so much in my entire life. Like, and you, they didn't have, you couldn't get from one side of the building to the other unless you went all the way around the outside before the exhibition hall opened. Um, and, and Karen and I did a workshop that we didn't realize was gonna have like probably 50 to 70 people in it. It was a huge room. We thought it was gonna be a smaller, more intimate thing and it wasn't. Uh, and interestingly, my uh, former colleague from my from lab was in it. She didn't know it was my session. So that was funny. And then I did a really small um, iPad workshop and I was showing Mia earlier. I used iTunes U course manager to deliver that. So if anybody wants to see what that looks like, if you're in an iPad school, um, I can give you access to it. And that went really well. And it was a really small group, which is more my preference. And then I did a global education session the next day. And that was probably 15, 20 people. It was not huge, but it was fine with me. But um, these conferences, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to me, like there's a certain amount of access to these. I don't think the average person can go to all these, can spend, you know, I don't know what the, how much it is to go to FETC, but to ISTE, it's at least three or $400. And then you have your travel on top of it. And like, you know, so many, if I were still teaching in Chicago public schools, like I was when at the beginning of my career, there's no way I'd be going to any of these conferences. So like, you know, I think the ed camp and the informal PD and taking control of your own destiny with this is the next best thing. You can, and, and also these conferences too, if you search for the hashtag FETC, you'll see all the stuff that was shared by it there. The problem with it now is that companies are starting to share their stuff all the time on those hashtags. So it gets a little crowded. Yes. Um, anyway, that was my conference experience from, from the last week. I, a couple of times I have followed the hashtag not at it's not, and that's been super fun. Um, just to be able to connect with people who are commiserating at the fact that not at it's but, um, and you follow in the two separate threads. That's, that's been kind of a neat. A neat thing to do and one of the things we started doing in the independent school world is we have an ed camp the day after NAIS annual conference so that's in March conferences Wednesday through Thursday Friday and then we'll school and we a local independent school and we'll host an ed camp so you've been in that traditional conference setting for three days and you it's just for, for people like me who are law of two feet people, it's very stressful and overwhelming. And then you get to an ed camp and you feel oh, these are my people and I can just take a breath and, um, and get the things that I may have missed by being in more of a traditional sit, sit, get setting. Um, and that's, that's actually been a wonderful way to both have that big giant conference experience and then get a more into experience. So. And, and NIEIS is, you always get amazing speakers at that conference. I've never, I've, I've been to it once in Chicago. Uh, never, I don't think back then they, they did a ed camp afterwards. Um, yeah. I see that they're also, I, I'm looking at this, they're doing a Pekecha Kucha thing, which I'm not saying it correctly, but they, they have it listed under workshops. And okay. you guys might be interested in this. Um, this is kind of an interesting Ooh. format. So Pekecha Kucha, if you Google it, is um, an Ignite format. You have to have 20 slides that advance automatically at 20 seconds per slide. So you have to rehearse it. And I cannot do the life of me, but I make other people do this. We have a Global Education Day before ISTE, 
and um, and we do ignite talks that are similar to what it's not it's 15 slides that we do um, in 20 seconds each um, but this is like a whole nother this is a similar kind of format so it looks like they're hosting these you know very short they're looking tons of them that's yeah. pretty cool and it's uh, on Friday so I'm only going to Friday this year they do a special day I mean even though I'm a, a school leader now um, I'm just going to Friday teacher day they you can go for the three days or just for Friday and it looks like a lot of them are on just on Friday which is fantastic because oh, I am missing Adam. I'm missing Adam Grant so if I'm gonna miss Adam Grant I need to uh, <laughs> yeah you know, get something awesome but. this this looks great um, you know what, what I think what I think is so interesting you know um, there are a couple of people, it's particularly in the school, I think in our class that feel like, you know, their, their hands are tied a little bit because of the lack of resources in their school. And um, there are things that you can do if you have enough community in your school to counteract that. And one of these things is doing an ed camp. Um, you know, on a Saturday, finding somebody to sponsor the food and getting people together just so that there's some fellowship, I think is, is half the battle. Uh, so if you're Absolutely. creative with it, I think you can do some interesting things and not wait for the powers that be to to have all the answers and all the money to do things. Um, and, and I also think that you know if you if you have a a principal if you're if you're in a school that has limited resources for professional development, but you're in a school that. Um, wants to to explore new ideas you can do your, an ed camp within your own building we did that um, we are we have a lot of blessings in terms of professional development um, resources but it, uh, one we spent one of our half day professional development days doing an in-house ed camp and that really then remind everyone in your faculty that they have an innate value and that they are the experts in something and so what is it that they can then be sharing with their own, with their own local community, and I think that that was highly highly uh, well received in our little building. I might be repeating myself because I've said this probably in other sessions that we've done, but I have a friend who's an assistant superintendent outside a, um, in a Portland, Oregon school that's pretty affluent, and they had um some you know the same kind of admi same administration there for a gazillion years and then a new team came in and the teachers really had never been to conferences before i guess if they'd wanted to they could go um and he, they did an in-house mini conference and i the teachers were so excited to have choice and to see their peers presenting and I, I was astounded by the power of it. And, you know, we assume that teachers don't want to go out and do these things and sometimes, and I think they do if they have the opportunity. And um, I just was, I was floored because the school district should have, you know, they, they had the, the means to do it. You know, their parents would have paid for the teachers to go anywhere, probably. Um, and it had been elusive to them too, so it's not there. Um, so I, this, we're, we're gonna wrap up because I know everybody has a life to lead, but Susan is here. So my friend from, um, Mom Brook, Alabama is here because I posted to Facebook and said she needs to meet Sarah. So Susan, say hello. Hey everyone. Let's see if I can get my video going. Oh, there you um, are. Uh, hey. Are you, are you cooking dinner or something? I, well, I'm cleaning up from dinner. Everybody bailed. They ate and like ran off. So <laughs> here I am in the kitchen. So, so Sarah. So I'm glad to have company. Yeah, it's glad to, we're glad to have you here. So Sarah is, where is your school, Sarah? It's in Montgomery. So we're right in, right to uh, 90 minutes south of you. So yeah, so I'd like, I'd love to talk, Sarah, and collaborate. It sounds like you guys have some neat things going on. And I'm always looking for different educators to meet and connect our teachers with. Um, so yeah, so maybe we can trade information and, and absolutely and talk some more. Absolutely, that'd be awesome. And welcome oh, to Alabama. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's great. So, so, so I met Susan through Karen Blumberg, and uh, okay, and so and and Susan, I know Sarah because she came to a small conference at Sidwell Friends I presented at for a couple of years, 
um, a while ago. And Sidwell Friends, for you guys that don't know, is the school that the Obama kids went to in um, D.C. And it's it's a Quaker school, and it's a really, really a, a mutual friend of all of ours. Alex Inman was the was the, was the director of innovation there, um, so we we were able to do that, and it was they had a really, a really beautiful school. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's it's a it's a, it's a small world once you get connected on social media, and and when you get yes, to actually meet in person, it makes it even more worthwhile. So, um, anyway, Sarah, is there anything else you want to share with us, or should we push off for tonight, or what do you think? I, well, it was just such, it was so such a pleasure to visit with all of you, and I um, please feel free to connect, and if if I can continue. Um, just to help anyone in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out. And your Twitter handle is teach to, what is it? Teach to teach to, connect. teach to connect. And Susan, what's yours? I am at Susan Brandt. So at S-U-Z-A-N-B-R-A-N-D-T. All right. All right. So I hope you guys all follow each other and um, you'll know my students. You'll see, hopefully you'll see a bunch of them following you and you can follow them back. And uh, I look forward to continuing to develop our professional learning network. So thanks everyone for coming. I really appreciate it.